I live in a small New England city that is nestled up against a river that pours out into the ocean. In that river, the river bridge is a lighthouse. Growing up, I often heard the horn from that lighthouse, guiding travelers in times of fog or storm. I don't hear it anymore. Some of the lighthouse buildings still remain, but they no longer guide travelers during troubled times. They're needed now more than ever. The waters are rough, the times are troubled, and a darkness is settling into everywhere. My name is Will, and this is the Sacred Lighthouse. Sancte Michael Archangeli, defende nos in prelio, contra ne quitiam et insidias diaboli esto presidium. Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest video. It is Friday, and what does that mean? Friday Fish and Chips, noontime. So uh, this one is going to be about questing in your life. Stay tuned. <laughs> So I'm going to set off um, to the neighborhood restaurant, and and I want to talk while I'm, while we're walking. I want to talk about questing in your life, like I said, and what exactly does that mean? Well, um, I'm gonna I, I'm I, I'm gonna do two things in this uh, vlog. First, I'm gonna talk about questing in your life, and I'm also going to give you an example of a quest in my life. At the time, I didn't realize it was a quest, but you might find it interesting. And this is a little bit of a repetition. I mean, if you really poke through my stuff um, on the website, and well, actually, one of my other websites, not the stormthecastle.com website, if you poke through all my stuff, and some people do dig up these little gems, this story, um, I've told this story before, but I thought it was worth telling here on YouTube. And uh, I'm going to actually uh, pop in some, some pictures and stuff to help you along with this. Uh, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, and and you don't right now you don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, first let's talk about questing in your life. You know, uh, people have, um, you know, perspectives in their life, right? And one common thing is, you know, the glass is half empty, the glass is half full, right? You know, you might be a glass half empty person or a glass half full person, and but that's kind of simplistic, you know. Some people perceive life as a, you know, as a game to play, and you know that particularly happens a lot with money. You know, it's like a game for some people. But you know how you perceive your life is, you know, it's kind of um, well, it's important. And I know I had a, a series of events happen to me that just was I'm just living my life, and nothing serious. You know, I'm not talking about a, well, maybe serious, but. And I, and it never really. I just kind of lived my life and did my things and did some stuff and didn't realize that maybe, actually, it was on a quest. Yeah, and that's a perspective that um, you might want to take a look at in sometimes in your life because it'll also it also I think helps to uh, you know to get to where you want to go. If you step step back and you say, hey, maybe you're having difficulties in your life or you're facing particular challenges, you know, you might be able to step back and say, well, you know what, I'm on a quest here. And just like in a, you know, a video game, I mean, where do we get video games from? We get them from our experiences in life, right? And, and you know, you might uh, talk to the local tavern owner who says, tells you that he needs, you know, a a sack of potatoes and you have to go to the potato farmer and get the sack of potatoes but the potato farmer says well you know I need to, I, I can't I need a rake I can't get the potatoes without a rake so you have to get the rake and so and that's you know this is wonderful I love quests in, in these medieval video games and I'm looking forward to um, a new one coming out called King, Kingdom Come Deliverance but well anyway and so doesn't that seem like sometimes that happens in your life Really, and if you look at it from that perspective, even though sometimes the things are challenging, right? You can actually 
turn it into a quest and what it really means. What's what's really going on here? Why are you being challenged in this way? And why are these obstacles put in your way? And why, you know, what are you going to benefit in terms of not just financially, but in terms of who you are as a person? And I think that's interesting. So, you know, consider that. And, and so now let me tell you a little bit about a quest in my life that I didn't even realize was a kind of like that way. Um, I took a trip to Japan uh, several years back. And I had several things I wanted to accomplish while I was there. And one of them was I wanted to actually buy a katana, you know, a samurai sword. While I was there, I wanted to get one in Japan. And, you know, that way I could display it and say, yeah, I bought that while I was on a trip to Japan. And you know I love swords. So, uh, and, and I've always been a fan of the Japanese martial arts, you know. And so that was my thing. I was going to get myself a sword. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's interesting because the Japanese are kind of skittish about their swords. You know, it's a, it goes, it's a big thing for them. Because, you know, at the end of World War II, you know, we confiscated all their swords, as many of them as we could get, and it was a lot of them. So now they're skittish about giving them out or giving them away or selling them or, you know, they don't, they're a national treasure for the Japanese. And they're, and they're right, they are a national treasure. So there's a little bit of skittishness there when it comes to outsiders coming into the country and getting swords. Um... And then, you know, and, and I, I don't disagree with that. I, I think there's some validity in that. Well, anyway, so I'm in Japan and I'm talking to all kinds of people. I'm even talking to people on the street saying, hey, where the heck do I buy a, a sword? You know, and you now people were put, telling me and pointing me towards these shops, which are nice, but these, you know, these kinds of places that, you know, are for tourists, and they sell swords. You can get one of some nice katana for, you know, I don't know, three hundred bucks, five hundred bucks, or something or less. But I don't know. It just wasn't. It was just too commercial and consumeristic, you know. So I, I you know, I kept talking to people, and I was kind of stumped. I was in. Let me. At the point, I was at that time. I started out in Okinawa, and I spent a week in, on that island, and then I, uh, I forget. I flew to. Um, Tokyo and there I continued you know and there were more shops that you know kind of like were souvenir shops but nicer not really like a you know, they, they weren't selling you know junk but I, I you know I wanted a better experience and a better sword uh, so I and I was stumped I couldn't find anyone I even remember talking to spotting these bunch of teenagers in in a in a, 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 a the parking lot of a, a mall, and I walked right up to them and I said, "Hey, you know what, what's the deal with the samurai swords and the, the Japanese katanas? Where can I actually get a real one?" And they were like, "Oh, I don't know. Maybe you have to talk to the yakuza, <laughs> right? Which is the uh, the fabled or the mythical Japanese uh, mafia." Well, my quest continued. Now I'm going to call it a quest, and because it kind of is a quest, but. I want to tell you now. Let me go back a little bit. I've, to get to Japan was a, was an ordeal for me. You know, um, it was in terms of. I think it took about. I, I flew out of. How did I fly? I think I flew Boston to New York, and then New York to maybe. Can I? I think Paris or Amsterdam, and then Amsterdam to. Uh, Japan, Tokyo, and then Tokyo to Okinawa. It was it was a whole thing. The, the The whole thing took like 26 hours, so it was a lot and a lot of travel. And um, so I was exhausted. But when I finally got there, finally, finally was done and arrived at my destination, I was I was you know grateful and happy and tired as all heck. But I went outside to look at the stars, which is something I try to do whenever I travel. And there in the sky was the moon. It was full. And I watched a cloud formation. And this is a true story. I'm not making this up. I watched a cloud that was shaped like a dragon with an open mouth. And I watched it slowly move and swallow the moon. Really. I, I'm not one, I should have took a picture. I, I didn't have my camera with me. Um, I was shocked. And, you know, and I was, I think 
open to this because I was so exhausted, you know, but I was, wow, that was my first night in Japan. Well, anyway, let's fast forward now. So now I'm in Tokyo. And I was sightseeing too. I wasn't just, you know, trying to track down a sword. You know, I was sightseeing and doing different things. And I was on this one tour bus. And we had a tour guide. It was like a half-day trip or something somewhere. I forget even where. One of the castles, maybe, you know, Himeji or Shuri Castle or something. One of the castles in Japan. And um, the tour guide was very fluent in English and Japanese. And so I just, at one point during the trip, I just went up to him and said, Hey, I want to, like, buy a real, you know, katana, a real samurai sword. Where, where can I get one? And she looked at me and paused for a second. And she said, I know exactly where to go. She said, there's this little shop in Kyoto which is on the other side of Japan. It's a long, actually a long trip by the super train. Um, and she said, so she drew me a little map. On a, she grabbed a piece of paper and she drew a little map. And she said, here's the castle in Kyoto. Here's this street. Here's that street. And here's the shop right here. She pointed to it. That is where you go. That's the place you're going to find. And I, so I thought to myself, you know, gee, wow. If we, if we go back to my thought about a quest, you know, and so you know what happens to you in your life when you're on a quest well a couple of things first off you get intuitions and signs or you want to call them signs whatever you want to call them and that's what happened to me with the dragon swallowing the moon right and second of all people will come to your aid in your quest you know you will you know like they say doors will open you know stay true to what you're trying to do um, stay strong and just Keep moving forward, no matter how difficult it is, and people will come to your aid. So, after a few days in Tokyo, doing my sightseeing, I took the bullet train, which is an experience all in itself. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Right across Japan to Kyoto, Japan. And uh, I went to the shop, you know, found my, get, get maps, went to the shop, and sure enough, there it was. And I was there, I arrived, oh, what time was it? It was like... Five minutes after closing. So I was like, oh, well, I guess I got to get a hotel. So I got a hotel room, and I returned the next day. And the funny thing about it is I walked in that shop, and they had a lot of beautiful samurai swords. Well, anyway, I spotted one right away, and it was on the sheath of the sword, the wooden sheath, you know, that you put the sword into. It had a, a beautiful golden drawing, a, a painting, of a dragon and a moon and just like that I knew I had found the sword you know uh, it's, it's 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 interesting I I never I just ha you know just you know this is life this is this is if you if you're open to just you know the experience of experiences of life well there you go you know kind of like you can almost say magical things happen and it isn't, you know, this isn't a video game. This is, you know, your life. But there's these wonderful things these that they can um, reveal themselves. So anyway, I bought that sword. And I have it today. I keep it on my piano. And, um, I, you know, I'll pop in a picture or a video for you. And I'll see if I can, in the rest of this video, uh, let me see if I can track down some pictures so you can kind of see the experience I had. Um... You know, the bullet train and a little bit of to Tokyo, a little bit of, of uh, Japan and, you know, and, and, you know, the funny thing about that sword is I can't, you can I couldn't take it with me, you know, it had to pass customs, which, uh, you know, takes some time, you know, there's a special handling that has to go on with some things. So they, you know, packaged it up and shipped it to me and I forget how long it took, but, you know, a couple of few weeks later it, it, it arrived, you know, through customs and I, I, I received it in my home, which was just kind of nice. It was, so this whole thing, you know, and... And, you know, the funny thing about this is is that this whole trip, this whole thing derived from, you know, an incident that happened in my life where um, I had, you know, I had something happen that was, um, I guess you could say, uh, a critical thing happened in my life that, you know, set me, kind of set me on a quest. And, uh, that's, and, and, and then there you go. Uh, so that's that's pretty much all of today's uh, Friday Fish and Chips, and I, I thought you'd enjoy that story because because it's you know it's and it, it it might help you to take a look at your life and say hey you know 
what are the intuitions that I'm being given here? You know, what am, who are the people that are trying to help me in my life? Who, you know, who are the little NPCs, you know, who are the NPCs in my life here that are giving me advice and tips and helps and hints and guiding me to um, fight the good fight and keep moving forward, right? And, and you know, that's fun. And, and, and you know, and as life should be, you know, even though there's challenges and all of this stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and you can have a lot of fun with it, and so so be sensitive to quests in your life, and uh, and let me know. So, all right, so this is Friday Fish and Chips vlog episode three. I'm having, it, I'm enjoying it. It's very free form, and I'm covering all kinds of different subjects. But hey, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, what the heck? I this 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 story popped into my head, and I thought it'd be fun to share it with you guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the story. And if you're on a quest in your life, you know, hey, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear about it. You know, um, uh, it'd, be, it'd be fun. Uh, otherwise, um, if you're a subscriber to my channel, thank you very much. And I, I'm pretty sure, you know, there are some of you out there that have been subscribed to my channel for, you know, years. Four, five, six, ten years. You've been quietly just kind of following some of my videos and you uh, you pick the ones you like and you watch those and the ones you don't want to watch you don't watch and but uh you know I find that kind of fascinating you feel free um to uh you know send me an email and say hi i would be great I'm, why not right I, I occasionally I run into a person on the street uh that that recognizes me and you know, in different places. I was in a store the other day, and people recognized me, and uh, you know, which is kind of strange. But you know, it's good to see that people are enjoying my work and my videos and stuff like that. All right, so I'm gonna cut. All right, so that's it. Let me think. Um, what else? All right, I'm still doing the Monday giveaways. Keep keep a watch for those, and of course, I'm still building the. Uh, what am I still building? What the heck am I talking about here? I'm still building. Oh, I'm still building weapons and armor and all kinds of projects and stuff. And blacksmithing is starting up, and I'm excited about that. And anything else? Let me think. Yeah, I do have actually something else. I got two books coming out. Um, one epic fantasy book that I've been working on a long time. I'm finally almost done with it. Well, that's called The Left-Handed Sword. And I've been contacted by a publisher, and I'm under contract now to actually um, do a write a book on telescopes. You know, and how to use a small telescope. And I'm really excited about that because. If you're one of those people that follows my channel for a long time, you know I love telescopes. It's, it's probably, it may be my greatest passion. You know, I love the starry sky and, and you know, spending time with the telescope under it and exploring the universe. You know, um, you know, even if it is, even if it does show, the, um, even if it does show, a cloud swallowing the moon. Remember, a battle wages all around us. It is the battle between good and evil, and to the victor goes your soul. The tactics of evil are manifold, including confusion, obfuscation, disclarity, misinformation, manipulation, misdirection, and control. It has taken a strong hold over us, and we have been set off track, put on a dark path that is not right for us, a path that has led us away from the true meaning and purpose of being human. Don't get overly caught up in the material things of this world. That path leads to emptiness. That is not what life is about. That is a path of the deception. Make time to see the truth in things. Seek understanding of the real purpose and meaning of this gift we have been given.